Hello Hockey World, welcome to the New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024, the place where culture and pride hit the turf and some of the best players in the country have the chance to stand up and represent their heritage. We're coming to you live from the National Hockey Centre here in North Harbour, home of the North Harbour Hockey Association and home of the New Zealand Black Sticks. I'm Brad Pittman and we'll be with you this entire Easter weekend, bringing you all 16 games of the 2024 Heritage Hockey Tournament. I'm um, joined in commentary by one of our uh, tournament and event organisers, uh, Scott Wolf. Scott, awesome to have you here. Uh, awesome first day of tournament, and we're up in North Harbour this year. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brad. Um, it's fantastic to, to be up here at North Harbour. Uh, it's a beautiful facility, and um, I know the players uh, have uh, really enjoyed the experience so far, and um, we're really happy with how the first day is going. Yeah, that's it. As we see the two teams out here, uh, it's a little bit of a new look heritage this year uh, with two new entities uh, going head-to-head -head in this afternoon's match in the white strip. It's New Zealand Fiji, which uh, has a few of the, the, the guys we've seen over the last couple of years with New Zealand Pacifica, as well as some guys that have travelled over from Fiji, uh, part of their international team that have come across to play, uh, which is an exciting mix of guys taking on the New Zealand Asian side uh, newcomers to Heritage in both the men's and women's um, grades, of course, representing the the mixing pot that is the Asian Heritage here in New Zealand. So uh, pretty exciting stuff for the tournament, some new entities, some new organisations, and, and exciting to see how they're going to perform. Oh, absolutely. Um, I know that the uh, Asian entity in particular has been uh, looking to join the fray for the last couple of years, and there's been a, a lot of hard work in the background by a couple of key individuals who... Uh, have put together two um, very good teams uh, and uh, again the, the Fiji team uh, looking to really expand I suppose our reach uh, as well and um, to have a couple that were able to fly over uh, and I know there are others that are, are really keen to join the, uh, future tournaments as well so it's quite exciting times. Yeah as we see the two teams there of course our umpires out in the middle Sam Richmond, Dion Hawke in the pink uh, it's the Fijian team there in the white and grey that we can see on the screen now. 
And the Asian side there in the black, yellow, red, um, Waikato Money Oporto kit. Uh, I understand their, their uniforms got held up in customs uh, yeah, in the last couple of days. Brand new uniforms. Uh, they looked great, but unfortunately just couldn't get through customs in time. And Easter being a busy time uh, through customs uh, didn't quite make it. Um, but, you know, we're here. They're, they're using the, the, the backup. Yep. And, uh, hey, they look great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As we see uh, some of the players lining up for this New Zealand Fiji side. Uh, a couple of players, of course, to make mention of. Adrian Smith, he's been at a few uh, Heritage Hockey tournaments now for New Zealand Pacifica, part of the uh, Fijian international side. Um, Dan Scanlon, Jan Peterson, guys who have played a few of these tournaments, which is awesome to see. Uh, Zach Buenamasi, Adam Kailia, Zain Ayuk, these guys who are no strangers to um, the Heritage Hockey Tournament. We also have um, Chad. Easton, who's travelled over from Fiji mm -hmm. to represent uh, his land. And, um, yeah, just probably a, a, a point about Adrian. Um, he did represent Fiji at Oman recently mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, and I think that's where some of these connections, uh, you know, started really forming up and firming up was was through some of the international fixtures. Uh, some of the New Zealand Māori guys have been able to be involved in and um, playing against those Fiji insides in, in Australia and then in Oman. Just opened up this gate and open up the pathway for them to get across here. And of course, on the Asian side, there's some, some guns that we know about that have been at this tournament before as well. Dylan Muggleston, one that comes to, to mind pretty quickly. Quinton Smith, mm -hmm. who's played some games for the New Zealand Māori team. Um, Lloyd McLaughlin out there, pretty well known up and down the country. Um, but yeah, some, some pretty talented players on both sides of the field. Yep, uh, Ryan Shoes, um, part mm. of the Futures program as well. Um, yeah, there's a couple of really strong players out there. Yeah, we're underway here now, first quarter. It's our last game for the day, the 4 o'clock men's game. And this uh, New Zealand Asian side, first use of the ball. Happy just to keep some possession around the back. And win their free hit there. And I was just talking to uh, Harley a little earlier. Harley Cooper, of course... Uh, about some of the goalkeepers out here. He's pretty familiar. We might see one of them in action just cool. now. Great pass, Jandal, Dan Scanlon. Both <sighs> dangerous players in that circle. Yeah, they just couldn't link up on that one. I think if Jan had stayed where he was, that's where Scanlon was trying to get it back to. Uh, but yeah, the, apparently these, these two goalkeepers here for this New Zealand Asian side and Hayden Hartley and uh, John Casey, both pretty talented young uh, young goalkeepers. So... Looking forward to seeing them. They're both tall young fellas as well. So, uh, yeah, it'll be good to see. And then on the other so side, of course, uh, David Finau in there to start. But Ravi Gounder will come on as well. Here's uh, the Fiji side working up the sideline. That's Kervin Guttenbiel. It's a nice interplay there. Yeah, good couple of passes, but just fell away from it in the end. And a bit of pressure being put on here. Dan Scanlon's hunting. You can always spot Dan Scanlon, whether it's uh, 40 degrees or 4 degrees. He's got his long sleeves on. <laughs> Probably good out there today. It's uh, sunny, but uh, quite a chill on that one. Yeah, week. there's a bit of a breeze come through. We had some showers in the earlier games, certainly in the, uh, the first women's game. Beautiful though, keeps it a little bit cooler. And here we go, the Fiji side, this is Adam Kailia. Great pass, Great Scanlon. Oh, oh. He's kicking himself, he doesn't miss those too often, Dan Scanlon. It's a nice space too. And you know, I caught up with Adam Kailia a little earlier in the day. He said he's uh, lost a bit of weight, trying to take things uh, seriously this year, he reckons. He looked pretty fast in that first little little crack at it, so good to see him out there for this uh, NZVG side. Great to see Dylan back too. Uh, two years ago, played for the Barbarian squad and uh, was player of our tournament that year yep. as well. Yeah, really um, put his name up in lights at, at that tournament, the yes. the second year at uh, at Colmar. I do remember 
It's going to be interesting if they get a few PCs, uh, what he can do with that ball. Yeah, that's it. He was a gun then. Yeah, two more years onto it. I can't wait. And speaking of can't wait, here come NZ Fiji, two inside drags. Oh, and that's execution at its finest. Pretty sure it's Rocco Ludoff over there. It looked like his forehand drag. We'll see him on the screen there. See the replay here. Two times, show, turn, again, same move. And then cool as you like. Pass the goalkeeper it is, Rocco Ludoff. There for NZ Fiji. They start fast here. And you'd think the forehand drag like that's the, the harder one to pull off twice considering the defender's on their forehand, but uh, when you're moving that quick. <laughs> and he sold it well too. Yep. Just used the body fake. I mean, Fiji team's a very strong team. Uh, you know, they're potentially one of the favourites of the tournament and uh, they're looking good already. Yeah, that's it. And they, um, they play with a, a real maturity in their game as well. I know that they're missing a few players that would usually uh, be here, the, the likes of the Frasers and uh, even uh, a couple of other guys we've seen in, in previous years. But oh, there's talent right across the park. Well, for both teams, but you're right, this Fiji inside, they'll fancy their chances this weekend. And perhaps a little bit of a fortunate one there for Just NZ Fiji. Took his after ball there for a second. And uh, these guys don't know, need those easy turnovers. Yeah, that's, it was a little bit like the... Um, the NZ Asian women in the previous game. Just a couple of unforced ones that uh, invited the Heritage Barbarians women into and, the game. Yeah, and it was the zeros because I actually th thought those Asian, uh, the Asian women's team played really well in yep. the passages there. They looked really good. There is Muggleston just uh, a little bit of a, a trip. Yeah, I think hand in the back was the call. Again, round the back. Good distance between the two middle defenders if they can stretch this press from NZ Fiji. Over it goes. You still got it, kept inside. Yeah, well run down there, Ryan Shoe. That's one thing about Ryan, he just keeps working hard. Oh, very nearly. There they go, this NZ Asian side working forward. Here's Lloyd McLaughlin. He's in the circle. Well defended. Good to see three white shirts there in defence for NZ Fiji. They come through Quentin Smith. Nice turn. And I think just guilty there, Julius Tullaval of turning his shoulders in the tackle. Have a look at the replay here. It's a tidy turn and yeah, just hand off the stick. There's Ryan Shu again working in this right hand corner. And you said it, uh, Scott, we'd love to see what Dylan Muggleston's got at this penalty corner. So I'm warming up, he was uh, looking pretty slick. Yeah, it's interesting too actually, so the, the one on the second bracket, Ben Schwass, Mm. He's also got a rocket in him. It does. Uh, both of them warming up, looking pretty good. So uh, real opportunity here for the NZ Asian side. Both brackets with weapons on them. They'll go to one. Muggleston, I don't think, got a hold of it. He's pulled up a bit lame too there, maybe. Mm. Uh, There's something on this, this, this stride. Yeah, yeah. It almost looks like yeah, he's shaking the leg a little bit, Dylan Muggleston. Whether it's hamstring or, or calf or something in the extension. That'd be a shame. Hopefully he's all good. Walking a little bit gingerly though. You could tell he certainly didn't get all of it. Mm. Cleaned up there. But well intercepted. Great bit of skill too. Nice no strong defense there. Yeah, really solid. Kyle Carver. Here is Kava. Just 
Oh, Josh shoots us into the, the game. Leg looks all right there. Ben Muggleston on the bike. It's a great ball. Oh, well saved there. Oh, yeah, I was actually wondering, uh, had he maybe been better coming out to, to clear it before the player got there, but yeah. stood his ground and covered up as much as he could. Well saved there. And goal, and here they are at the other end. What I love about this game, the transition to, from end to end can happen so quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Such a, a fast-paced, exciting game. For those of you that are joining us on YouTube or on the website, uh, thanks for being here. We've loved bringing you the first day so far of here at the Chockey 2024. Three more, of course, to come following this. Culminating with our finals on Easter Monday. Yeah, yeah, it's good fighting there. Yeah, Scanlon getting nice and low. He's some uh, indoor hockey experience. First one, I think, uh, was outside the circle, so they'll go back for that through Jake Sujun. Oh, that's a lovely touch. <laughs> that's a uh, real skill. And here's a foot race. The and Asians fancy themselves. Yeah. Pace. I just probably got caught on the wrong lines mm. together, though. Yeah, if it's one thing we have noticed, uh, there's some pace up front on this Asian side. Young Sungkook Man uh, making his debut as well for this tournament. He's uh, it's quite quick. He's got a, a lot of pace about him as well. Mm. Notice Chen Yang here as well. Come on for the Asian side. Uh, played some of his hockey down in Rotorua. So out right here now. This is trouble. For oh, lucky it got a little big on Rocco Ludov, and here come the Asian side. Here is Chen. We got a little bit lucky there. The Fiji inside. Zayna Yuk. Uh, I think you'll find it probably collected his foot about halfway, but. Uh, down they go, and on they trot. We go here is Ayuk. I like the, they can use their bodies well. The the, the Fiji team they've got uh, definite size on the their opposition. Yeah, that's uh, especially some of these players around the back mm. group, um, the likes of Julius Talavau, Zayn Ayuk, even uh, Jan Peterson, big mm. strong guys. So. But let's see if they can be exposed for some speed at the at the back, potentially, as we see them stretching right out. There's an overhead. It'll fall well for the Asian side. And Scott, you spoke about, obviously, this Asian entity kind of taking a couple of years or, and some real interest and, and some uh, people behind the scenes. Uh, what sort of things has it taken for these guys to get to this position to be able to put a team together? Uh, a lot of it's been um, word of mouth. People literally uh, reaching out to um, players um, that they know, uh, mm. other Asian players, um, then networking. Uh, I know that um, there's been some messages going out to different associations and um, looking and, and spreading the word that this is happening. Um, you know, the, the good thing, uh, but the unfortunate thing for this year is there's a lot of talent out there that were very keen to be involved with uh, the Asian team, but they couldn't make it this year. Mm. Um, but what that does is it, it's, I mean, this is a great foundation yep. for Asian hockey for both the men and women. And uh, we know that's going to just grow from here, as it has for uh, the Pacific teams, as it has for the um, you know, Indian women's. They've got to have their f first team uh, full of Indians yep. this year. It's been great for the growth of uh, heritage sport. Oh, here we go. Ooh, great opportunity. Very nearly there. Look at the pace on the Asian strikers. That's exciting. And only out as far as the sideline there for Zed Fiji. But yeah, you're right. Just uh, creating an opportunity for um, our Asian community. Not just them. All of the uh, backgrounds that we do create opportunities for here. But uh, I'd love to see more and more of them. Mm. Uh, want to be involved in years coming so well that's what the barbarians concept's about is too is um giving some different uh, heritages an opportunity to play and be involved with this and um 
uh, the Asian teams for itself were born out of being involved in the Barbarians. Yep. Oh, lovely touch there down the sideline. So Augustine Shaw picking it out, and here's Scanlon back into the midfield. Linking up there. Or it's Raymond who's now on the field for Fiji. Scanlon's still going. He doesn't stop. Ooh, a bit complacent at the back there, letting that go across. Yeah, very nearly uh, trouble. And we go back down the other end. <laughs> Speed, skill, all of it. Here is Adrian Smith here, just rolling it back in through Jan Peterson. Calm heads. Yep. That's a nice pass. Here is the goal scorer, Rocco Ludolf, linking up there. Down that right side with Moritz Raymond, but they run out of space. And just like that, we've only got two and a half minutes left in this first quarter. Such as uh, the pace of this game so far. You can see the combination starting to happen for the, the Fijians. Um, not quite there yet, but you can, you know, over the weekend, those things will just become better and better with some of their linking. Yeah, that's it. And we've said that through all three of the, the first games. Is You see that first 15, 20 maybe minutes of, of it... Uh, you see the nerves and the first game together and, and starting to understand each other and it does improve over the week which is what makes Monday so exciting. Mm -hmm. Not only is it finals but teams are pretty much playing their best level of hockey come Monday. Well, often it's the, the, the first time these guys have been together as on day one. Yep. Uh, they're coming from all over the country. Uh, they don't get the opportunity to work together as a team uh, and day one is about feeling things out, getting some systems right. underdone that one just rolled off the back of the stick you keep that in and of course uh, Sam Hewitt well I think he's trying to get around every team at Heritage he's coaching this uh, Asian men's side this year which is awesome for Sammy stepping up here as the ball comes in and it's saved goes over the, the back line of course being involved with the senior multi team freedom up for the weekend and uh, yep if there's anyone keen for a free jacket, it's Sammy Hewitt. and uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's done well. We, we were talking to him earlier. He's played for Pacifica, uh, coached uh, junior Māoris and uh, with the senior Māoris and now coaching Asians. Yeah, that's it. That's it. If he finds him uh, an Indian team, he'd be done the loop. And <laughs> uh, re we really appreciate his enthusiasm. He's been fantastic. So... Um, uh, great to have someone like that who's uh, just very keen to be involved with Heritage um, Hockey. Yeah, and we'll have the pleasure of having him up here, I think, tomorrow uh, up in commentary for a game. Looking forward to chatting with Sam and, um, yeah, seeing how his uh, experience this weekend with the Asian side is going. He'll be pleased with most of what he's seen in this first quarter. Obviously, the goal, uh, not so much, but yeah, there's been some good signs from this uh the Sensei Asians' first quarter of hockey. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, you talked about it before. It's a bit of feeling uh, out the game, um, but I think the Asian men have um, settled into the game nicely after the first five and uh, started to show a bit of composure. And yeah, it's been a, a nice even game for the last ten minutes. Yeah, it has. It has. It was a fast start from the uh, NZ Fiji team, and they capitalised on that. The goal through Rocco Ludolf. Uh, but since then, you're right, it has kind of been back and forth. And uh, as we see the teams in there, you know, NZ Fiji side, uh, they're up 1-0 so far. There is Sam Hewitt with the NZ Asian team, talking through some of their work-ons and their uh, fixes for the remaining three quarters. And this is the goal here. To NZ Fiji through Rocco Ludolf beats one, two, three by a lotto ticket. Uh, but like you said, there's some opportunity for both teams in this uh, NZ Asian side. I, I thought they were going to uh, 
potentially peg it back here with what we know Dylan Muggleston can do at penalty corners. Let's see what happens to his leg here. Yeah, he just pulled up a little ginger after this, so we'll just see. Yeah, nothing super obvious. I'm no doctor, but perhaps a little bit of a turn on the ankle or uh, then this opportunity just... It's an unorthodox looking save, but anything that doesn't go in the goal is a good save. Adam Kailia, he had uh, a couple of smiles for this one. Very nearly put away there. <laughs> and that's uh, ready to go for the NZ Asians quick square to power aid. And we're out there. And uh, Scott, we've had uh, three and a half, or three and a quarter games now so far. We're at the new facility up here in Harbour. How has the first day gone in terms of, I mean, running the tournament? It's gone really well. I'm right from the the poor footy um, and to through each of the games. Uh, you know, as an organizer, um, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and a lot of running around and making sure things um, go smoothly. Um, but uh, it just became easier as the day settled into things and um, getting some of these teams up and running. Uh, and and you know, we're doing a, a lot of help uh, for both the barbarians and the Asian teams just making sure that um, we, we help them and uh, sort of work their way into this tournament as well. Obviously things like uniforms and, and um, gear that they need just to start things off for them. Yeah, and, and I think uh, like anything, once you get through that first couple of hours, the first couple of games, it all starts to uh, get into a bit of a rhythm. So I know from uh, my perspective, it's been an awesome first day of, of hockey. We're back, of course, for, for 2024, the fourth Heritage Hockey Tournament after uh, two in Auckland and one in Hamilton. Yeah, and uh, we are really happy to be here. It's um, you know North Harbour Stadium is you know the premier stadium in, in the country, yep. and uh, we, we've wanted to be here for a while. And the fact that we're here now is um, and, and being able to play this tournament, it's just fantastic. Yeah, you mentioned it. It's a world class facility. There's no other way to put it. And uh, Testament to obviously the the Black Six series that were here last year, and then one coming up, I believe, in three weeks' time, two weeks' time. Um, you know, out on these very fields where international tests are going to be taking place. So, mm. you know, so cool to celebrate um, Heritage Hockey here for 2024. Yeah, and we're we're um, very pleased with the direction that Heritage is going in terms of uh, you know. The introduction of new teams, uh, other teams wanting to join and you know, ha having conversations at the moment about how that might look for the future. Mm. So um, really happy. We've got uh, a few, I guess, uh, ideas or plans um, that, that are in play at the moment uh, that you know, we'll announce when the time is right. But um, quite exciting times for Heritage Hockey and um, just really happy with how things are going. Yeah, cool. I, I was going to uh, ask without trying to put you on the hot seat, you know, what, what does it look like moving forward we're only day one of the tournament so plenty still to work through this weekend but uh, it's cool to hear that there's uh you know some some ideas being thrown around some options some uh you know having a facility like this certainly helps that yep. you know, in terms of growth and, and things like that and like i think you've alluded to as long as you can get good people in good spots and yep. and uh that word of mouth travels and people committed to it uh, can only but grow and, and continue to be successful yeah well, as I said, the, uh, with the Asian entity itself, uh, we only see things growing from here for, for them and are excited by the prospect. But, you know, I was sitting in the room where we take player profile photos and uh, have the Asian women's team walk in and just to have them all together in one space, it looked fantastic. Mm. We, were, we were so uh, encouraged by that. And um, the, the enthusiasm too, to be here and to be representing where they're from, it's just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, and that's what this tournament's been built on, uh, is the ability to represent your identity um, mm. outside of the traditional, well, what area of New Zealand do you live in? <laughs> well, yeah, and and to be in a team where, you know, a team where you are with your, you know, we, with the people where you're from. Yep. Uh, you go to you play your clubs, you play your schools. Um, there might be one other person of uh, your ethnicity in the, in the team at most, usually. So um, to come here and to be you know, part of a full team, it goes for Māoris, it goes for Indians, it goes for all, all of our heritage teams. Um, 
you know, it's a, it's a great and different experience. Yeah, we'll just check out this highlight really quickly. There's a penalty corner called here on Zainar Yuk. He thought he was pretty hard done by there. Uh, look, Sammy, Sammy's down there a lot closer than we are, so I'll back him in. But, uh, yeah, they had a couple of words to say about it, the NZ Fiji boys. And uh, he's still on the park there, Dil Muggleston. So let's see potentially what we've got battery. here. Yeah, we'll sw switch at the top. Late yep. switch, and it's going to be the opposite side. Stroke. Penalty stroke, body save on the line. We did talk a little earlier about uh, Ben Schwass. They went late switch. And it was on the body there, I'm pretty sure, of Julius Tullaval. So Dylan Muggleston will step in for this. Makes no mistake. Dylan Muggleston levels things back up here for NZ Asian. Great penalty corner variation there. The late switch to Schwarz, and his was dead on target. It makes the game uh, interesting now. Uh, the, we, we talked about uh, how things had evened out through that first quarter, and obviously now that's reflected on the scoreboard. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, Fiji do from here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. One all now, and... Uh, Bit of pressure, I guess, back on this NZ Fiji team now to answer or to hold on. You can see this Asian side really starting to push now. Is it getting strikers high up the field. I like this. Is it Dylan's leg looks fine just then. It's moving at some pace. Yeah. It's Kailia. Kailia. So I'm just going to pick up the foot there on the way through. James Hornsby, who was defending up outside the circle. And away they come. Picked up. And some 3D. This is nice from NZ Fiji. Have they got an answer already? Oh, very nearly. Rocco Ludov couldn't believe it went past. Jake Suchun with the pass. It was moving too. Yep. Yeah, that only needed a little touch, and it was uh, in the back of the goal. Perhaps a little miscommunication there in the midfield and striker. Midfield looked like he left it. Striker wasn't anywhere near it. And on come the troops for NZ Fiji. It's the thing, if they're going to try and keep up with the pace of this Asian side, they're going to have to keep the subs rolling. Suncooks across cutting that line off. Oh. Great entry, Ludov. It's excellent transition. They've come this has come from left half around the right half, back through to left midfield. This is a really solid build up from NZ Fiji, but they've turned it over. It's a nice pass into space. Yeah. The only thing is I'd say is uh oh, else is there. <laughs> at that and he's probably looking into the sun from that side too. True. Um, just looking at the shadows on the pitch. Great pick from Dill Muggleston, and they've got it back there. Chen Yang. It's Quentin Smith looking down the line. It's going straight to the forehand, though, and here come NZ Fiji. Dan Scanlon. Scanlon. The turnovers are coming a bit too easily on this, the right hand side here for um, the Asian team. Oh, and again, that one's gone across the middle of the circle. A couple of opportunities back to back here up this year. Like, like you say, this right defensive side for the NZ Asia side. Left attack for NZ Fiji. This is a key time, I think, for uh, the Asian defence. So yeah, keep your heads in the game. That's it. There's a few waves here at the Fiji side want to answer back as quickly as possible after that uh, NZ Asian goal. A couple of uh, couple of repeat efforts in defence required early doors here for the NZ Asian team. Here comes Quentin Smith. That's a bit of passing, but again, a turnover in the middle of the field. It's not what you want to see uh, if your coach, Sammy Hewitt. Too many midfield turnovers. And screen did not move across there yep. to cut that pass off. 
gets the newness as well of some of these players' combinations. Yes, Scanlon, and it goes. And penalty corner to just inside the circle. You're right, you mentioned that screen not sliding, and it's one of those things when you do two or three efforts of it and you don't get the reward for it, it's easy just to clock off and, and not keep going at it. Um, like I said, just a little bit of perhaps inexperience together. And that one, Dylan Muggleston would have wished he'd just taken one more step. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Both these teams have some, have some uh, very good drag pick uh, components. So this uh, always is interesting at PC time. Yeah, it looks like Dan Scanlon, his variation is usually an upright hit. He's got a bit of a crack on him. Julius Tullaval there on the second oh. bracket. He's got a flick. He can, and he can crack it too. Yep. <laughs> Unorthodox, if, if nothing else, a little bit different, but that is Dan Scan. He scores goals there a little bit different. Just got a little bit of a skip on it there, trying to get uh, catch out the goalkeeper. I think it probably also came off the trap a little yeah, bit further than he'd like as well. Came across his body. I'm waiting for the overhead here. Their fullback is uh, very good, but uh, to be fair, the Fiji team do have everyone covered down this half. Yeah, I'd actually like to see this uh, NZ Asian side maybe start in the middle of the field altogether, create those pockets to throw into, because I've also heard of the overhead exploits out of the back, uh, and then make it a foot race into those corners, which I dare say they'd probably win, mm. uh, rather than standing out wide to start with and allowing NZ Fiji to set up in shape. They've definitely got a lot of pace up front, uh, this Asian team there. Every one of them have been moving... There we go. There's Maybe the an overhead again. again, probably looking into the sun that way, potentially um, on that angle. But yeah, there's the idea. Drag them out of shape and then throw the overhead over the top. Maybe an option for the second half. Good transfer there through Moritz Raymond. I'll come back and around. This is the composure we're used to seeing from some of these players we've seen before here at this tournament. And you can just see there, number 20 for NZ Fiji, Chad Eastgate, who you mentioned a little earlier. Scott, one of those that have come across and joining us for this year's tournament. Yeah, I met him uh, for the first time last night um, uh, when the Barbarians women's were training because uh, it's part of part of that team and um, yeah, really lovely guy. Mm. And uh, a lot's happened over there in Fiji, and now they've got the turf back open after a few years of, of having no turf. Uh, so you know, hockey's um, really starting to, to develop over there again as well. And I know a lot of those players have, have, have missed the turf for a while. Good overhead here, isolate 101. Oh, lovely couple of passes there, but that one just beats them all. Here's Muggleston. Still here, though, for NZ Asian. It's a really nice one-two pass here along the baseline. Uh, nice little bit of possession uh, that they held onto for a little while there, too. Just putting a little bit of pressure on Fiji. And there's the overhead. They've gone far end. Cut out well, though, by the scrambling defence. Still locked up, one each, with just under four and a half minutes left to play in this first half. There, yeah, huge opportunity. And it was our man, Chad Eastgate. There's the overhead we heard about. Perfect. And they've got some numbers here, Lloyd McLaughlin. He's got it back again here, McLaughlin, showing some skill. Really well Rick. cut out by Zach Buenamasi on that first instance. 
And there it is. That's a bomb of an overhead. He's gone from 25 yard to 25 yard comfortably. Yeah, I've watched uh, him do that a few in a few games this year, and uh, I just knew how dangerous he, he can be. And, uh, he picked his moment well. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we almost and it was teammate to teammate too to, to Lloyd. So yep. uh, they know exactly what each other can do and what to look for. Yeah, we've almost been waiting for it to happen. Um, perhaps the Fiji side thought it wasn't going to come, and there it was. That's a big one. Yeah. And speaking of big opportunity here for NZ Asia. Come off the foot, they'll get a reset. Be interesting if they uh, can convert here with a couple of minutes going into half time. Yeah, it looks like uh, Dylan Muggleston's off the field, so uh, perhaps they still go through Schwass at the second bracket. Little save there over that right post. Nice defense there. Read that well. Quick transition. Very quick transition. No one there. <laughs> Just like that, they go down the other end. Yes, yeah, so it was Gerard Tan who'd stepped up onto that penalty corner flick, the captain of the uh, New Zealand Asian side. Tempted to look for Lloyd again. He's Lloyd in some good areas himself. at the moment. Zach Bunamasi finds Adam Kailia. Excellent turn. Still going. Oh, ho, ho. Cleaned up in the end. Here we go. Two on one if he can pull it in. Oh, free hit out for Fiji. Julius There's Sullivan. There's no one behind them if they got through there. Yep. Tackle had to be made. And there's player to player again. That's a lovely overhead from Tullaval. Not great defending as well. They, they left him clean and open there. Yeah, that's right down the middle of the field too. Thought that was a foot. Here come the Asian team. Not through Scanlon. The crowd appreciating that. Yeah, I think we've got some of the uh, some of the heritage barbarians, ladies, ex uh, NZ Pacifica, down in front of us, cheering for uh, some of the Fiji boys here. So cool to see the ladies sticking around. I know it was the same for the earlier men's game, the uh, NZI ladies out in full force, cheer on their boys. So oh, it's really cool to see the teams sticking around. Oh, too big for the boots here of Kyle Carver. A little bit of a rough oh, pass, but here comes. Picked uh, Lloyd's pocket there. Yeah, Sui Choon. Oh, Ooh. what a ball. That had some zip on it too. Really good pass across from Zach Buenamasi. Trying to link up there with Su Choon, who'd found himself up the front. Be the last play if they even get going. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there's the hooter, and it is our half time break here. Locked up at one all. Scott, it's our last game for the first day between New Zealand Asians and NZ Fiji. It's probably where it deserves to be at the moment, one all. The game's been a bit back and forth. Teams have had opportunity and possession, uh, but it's a good game of hockey. Oh, it's, it's been great, and um, I, I would have thought that uh, Fiji would have gone in um, as the favourites and maybe the, they thought that themselves um, but this Asian men's team have uh, really stood up and as the game has progressed they've started to look more and more comfortable and the opportunities are starting to come more regularly as well so um, as an organiser I couldn't ask for more when you've you got nice close games of hockey um, you've got new teams coming in and they're competing and uh, putting on a great show and uh, I'm looking forward to the second half, and I hope more of that continues. Yeah, absolutely. As we see, we get a bit of insight for both teams there. Uh, there's the NZ Fiji boys. How cool to get right in the middle of it there. You can see Adrian Smith there leading a bit of conversation. On the other side, 
It's the NZ Asian group. Bit of Sammy bit. Hewitt, you can see. Maybe a bit of wind up there for the cameraman, trying to hold it steady. Yeah, I think he's just got the shakes. <laughs> anyway, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful view here. We'll be back after a couple of short ads with some of the highlights from the first half. Welcome back here to the National Hockey Centre here in North Harbour. It's day one of the New Zealand Heritage Hockey Tournament 2024. You're seeing scenes here of halftime for this fourth game of day one. It's the second men's match of the day between New Zealand Asian on your screen now and NZ Fiji in the white strip. And Scott, we've been treated to uh, action at both ends. Um, what do you think are the biggest, uh, as we see some of these highlights, what do you think are the biggest work-ons that um, this Asian side will want to take on the third quarter? I think um, in parts they look good in terms of when they hold on to the ball, but there's patches uh, around the play, especially up the flanks, where um, they've turned over, been guilty of turning over um, some ball too easily. Um, if they can sort that out, it, uh, they're going to, they've already proven that when they're up front, they can do something with it and then we just need to control that midfield uh, around their flanks. Yeah that's it and um, a lot of time hockey's won in the midfields and who can can uh, get the ball to the, the right end of the field efficiently so you're right there's some real speed and skill in that front line for the uh, Asian side that we'd love to see unlocked a little bit more more often. Yeah and that's I, I think is their biggest weapon and they knew that going before but it's starting to show as well their pace uh, um, uh, on the ball has been um, uh, uh, quite telling at times yep. um, but you know the Fijian team are very experienced and that's what, what's showing through as well when they get the ball how they link with each other and how they um, connect with their passing uh, is a, probably their biggest point of difference they've got a lot more control yeah that's it and, and like we mentioned in the build up there's probably over half of that F Fijian team that have played this tournament before uh, and played it to a high level, uh, you know, been in finals and, and uh, you know, been right at the top level of this tournament. So they know what it takes to, to get around a field and, and get around this tournament. So um, you're right, that's their strength and their ability to build things up. But you know, contrasting styles here, that's what we love to see at Heritage Hockey. Not everybody playing the same way in the same style. We get a bit of out of the box. We see Lloyd McLaughlin there on screen for NZ Asia. Yeah, a lot of credit has to go to Lloyd for the work he's put uh, put in to uh, create this um, the Asian entity. I mean, he it, it was him who started to involve with each other for uh, a few years now, uh, showing up there in just terms of how they they're moving the ball through uh, each other. Yeah, the yeah. Asians are showing like a good enterprise as well. You can see what they're trying to do, and it's just something that will, will start to be, become a little bit nat more natural over the next few days. Yeah, that's a, any new team like this, you've got to build habits. There's some skill and speed again. We spoke of it earlier, how quickly they can turn a defender inside out. And Ryan's very good at that. He uh, he moves um, on the receive very well and he just <coughs> takes off. Couldn't get through that time. Falls now for the Asian team. Uh, They'll have a sideline hit up in their attacking end. 
Still one all here between these two sides. And just Still early days. We haven't had a shootout today. Well, that's it. That's it. I, I do remember, I believe it was uh, the second year of tournament where on one of the days, almost all four of the games went. I think three of the four games went to a shootout. It became a bit of a norm when we had that tournament. <laughs> yeah, but, that's uh, it. Between yeah. that and a fire alarm, I think that's all we had that day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I'd love to see uh, a shootout. As a fan, of course. Well, it just means it's been a close game. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Ball out. This right side. Adrian Smith. That's gone out first, though. I think he knew it, too. <laughs> Julius Talavau. And uh, Scott, you you got to know that there's a Pacific Island team of some description out on the field because you can hear the laughs from uh, a mile away. <laughs> They're, uh, I assume, out in support here of the NZ Fiji team. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, look, we love the, the Pacific vibe that uh, the players bring, um, and you know, to have the added flavour as well of having uh, three Fijian players fly over. Uh, Wanting more, wanting to come, uh, and just bring more uh, of that Pacific flavour and flair. Fantastic. Yeah, that's it from uh, from side to side. This Asian team look really good when they get the ball moving with pace. That little midfield transfer. If they can just link up their their attackers one on one, they can cause real chaos for this Fiji team. Good turn over there by ZFG. Loot off, he's off. Ooh. Calvin Ratabuli. He's left his man. Oh, inside turn. Now they're all beaten. Couldn't believe he didn't get the free hit. It came in the end <laughs> for him. Rocco Loot off. I did wonder what was happening for a second, but the right call's been made. He just stood there in disbelief, I think, more than anything. Here he goes again, the goal scorer, Ludov. Here we go, Dylan. Oh, Jando loves it. Great tackle. He'd beaten one there. Muggleston couldn't get past the second. Experience of Jan coming through. Yeah, under some pressure here. Let's see some skill from Dill. Mm. Easy turnover in the yeah, middle Yeah, probably not the one he would have wanted. Ooh, he got a stick hook there, I thought. Scanlon, there's that shot. That's unfortunate. I thought there was a, a hooked stick there for a second on the um, Asian defender. One thing I am sure of, Dan Scanlon might have the quickest release on a reverse stick shot that I've seen in a long time. See the replay here. As soon as he finds a spot, mm. that's quick, man. That's really quick. As a defender, you don't even have the opportunity to get in and get close. You're right in the firing line, as they just found out then. And uh, an opportunity here for Fiji to push themselves back in the lead. Out it comes. Ooh, save. Great, great save. save. Nice composure at the back. Oh. 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 Very nearly. He found the man and put it right in the areas. Just couldn't be pulled in. So Fiji with the ball on the sideline. Out they go. Oh. Just through too many players. Yeah, that, that's probably the one issue with this Asian side. You want their strikers getting the ball on the 25-yard line and having a crack, not on halfway. Is speaking of having a crack. Has it got an, um, has they got an oh, God. Chad Eastgate was uh, in the wars there, right in front of goal. It looks like there's going to be.
16 yard hit there's the relieving overhead I'm not sure Scott if you saw was there a card there or was it just a firm whistle I couldn't quite catch uh, I wasn't sure that Sammy Richmond yeah wasn't sure and then two people ran off at exactly the same time one from each team so <laughs> yeah. it made yeah. it confusing yeah Uh, unsure, we'll confirm that shortly. Comes Fiji. Still going yeah, there. Looks like one of the Asian players are off. Yep, just getting confirmation in there. It was a card to one of the NZ Asian players, so they're under 10 at the moment. And a little bit of a, you be honest, I'll be honest, there from Jake Suchun and, and Dylan Muggleston. Pacifica having a period of, con uh, sort of dominance, control, uh, in this early in the second half. Yeah, we've had a couple of repeat attacks here. Here's another one. It's lovely, bit of skill, very nearly there for Fiji. And over the back line it rolls. That again was Calvin Ratabuli. I don't think the Asian team mind taking a little bit of time while their players are uh, calling up on the sideline there. No, that's it. That's it. On the opposite side, I'm sure this NZ Fiji will try and press, but pretty hard to when that overhead is your reliever. It's an interesting call because uh, Adrian's running right across the whole field and I thought the Asian player was in space there. Yeah, it's one of those um, it's one of those rules that still causes a little bit of uh, controversy and a little bit of uncertainty. No uncertainty about that one though. <laughs> well oh, brought nice. down. That's a great pass. Go to the middle field now. Here's their numbers. Oh, oh yeah, perfect. Ooh, and yes. has to be so big penalty cool. corner. Yeah. Great play by uh, the Asian team. A great break, nice transition between players there. Some I couldn't believe that pass had made it through there. That was electric. Let's have a look at this on the replay. That's reversed pass. Just threaded the gap perfectly. <laughs> There's one, two, three pretty rough challenges there on <laughs> Chen Yang. And penalty corner, I think, was uh, best case scenario for I wondered for if, uh, Fiji. if something might be uh, brought out of the pocket there from the... Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, and again, this is all valuable seconds off the clock for that card. They've got oh, two. They, and if they score while well, they've got a player down, yep. that's a, a big game changer. Let's see. There you go. Second bracket. And they'll go again. Dan Scanlon, one of the quickest out in penalty corner bracket, so you've really got to get it around him. Interesting, though, they didn't go to Dill Muggleston there, so they've gone back to... Um, the captain. Mm. It was. Uh, I wonder if they'll change that call now. Yeah, Gerard Tan. Yep. There he is. And again, run down by Dan Scanlon. Got to admire the the wants to put your body on the line in those situations. That ball is moving. Yeah, he's one of the better. You call him a suicide line runner uh, that we've seen who just gets his body on the line doesn't care about wearing them and he's rapid out it's too very quick. you think about it we, we're talking about him on attack and how quick he is to get the shot <laughs> off and then he's uh, running out and running down drag flex yeah absolutely here's Jake Suchun Adam Kailia great receive Looking at his options. Oh. Great pass, Zane Art Yuk. Suchun in the circle. Here is Fiji. Yeah. He was waiting for that. Yep, onto the foot, knew it. Suchun looked up, saw the foot exposed, yep. whipped it round. Thanks for coming. And you thought you were going to score at the other end? Well, we're going to come and have a crack at this end. So look nice at this. Patience. Wait till he got put his knee down. Yep. Yeah, as soon as he saw uh, that stick come out, he knew. And uh, I don't think we need too many lip readers to know what uh, the defender said there either. Uh, he said bugger. <laughs> Classic Kiwi ad. 
An opportunity now, of course, for Fiji. It's going to Kylia. Save. Oh. oh. What a save. Kylia has absolutely ripped it. They're protesting something. I'm yeah, sure they what. want another corner. I'm not entirely sure what for. We'll see it on the replay very shortly. Meanwhile, there's a long corner about to happen. Out it comes here for Fiji. Buenamasi, Scanlon. Yeah, that's two pretty rough uh, tackle attempts there. I'd love to see the replay on that last uh, penalty corner. Perhaps we'll see it here. And maybe I don't, I don't ask if he put it out the back deliberately. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think there's much to ask for there. It was a great glove save from the goalkeeper. It ended up in behind him and cleared off the line by Quinton Smith. Uh, Adam Kylie got a fair bit of it too. Yeah, that's just good defence. Hurt Kylie again on the second bracket. Goes to Kylie. Sometimes those those uh, drag picks that uh, don't go as well as planned can, can go in. Yeah, it just took a little deflection, I think, off the second runner. And lucky for the goalkeeper, it had gone wide enough because he was stuck in his boots. There's nothing worse than that as a goalkeeper when you've taken half a lunge. You feel like your feet are in concrete. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's no moving at all. And here come Fiji again. Looking like they've got a bit of ascendancy. This caught it lovely 3D. And it is Kailea. Good defence. Well done. Yeah, excellent defensive work there by the NZ Asians. Oh, and some see you later as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, just ran out of room. Just couldn't find his player to link up with. Julius Talaval will roll the ball out the back. Transfer there through Augustine Short. That's really solid play around the back from the Fiji side. Here is Justin Short. And they are leaving Jacob uh, alone in space, and you don't want that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's probably not the way I'd go about it. As a, probably for the third time this quarter, one's just sailed across the circle. There, that pass from Rocco Ludov. Close in the final 45 seconds of this third quarter. Pivotal third quarter. Neither of them able to get to oh, a lead here. Jan's open. Is it a foot? And here might be the last crack at it here for Fiji in this third quarter. As a defender, these are the worst times for a PC. Yeah. You've done so well all quarter yep. as they have. They've kept them out and... Um, that pressure goes on just for that, the final few seconds. Yeah, just off the goalkeeper there onto the foot of the defender. It's a bit of a tough one, but it is what it is. And here in this last five seconds now will be everybody up for Fiji. See Short just joining the fray there. There it is. Rocco, Rocco, absolutely rips one through. Thing come off the glove, and lucky the lineman ducked out of the way because that thing was travelling. Rocco Ludov doubles up for NZ Fiji. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, Quint Smith didn't want a bar of it. Might have even got him in the shoulder potentially. Looking at that, mm. I saw him grab his shoulder afterwards. Yep. I wasn't sure if he'd been hit. It's a great shot. Yeah, and well executed there. You, you said it, Scott. There's nothing worse as a defender than conceding one like that on the buzzer at the end of the quarter uh, when you've been so good all quarter at defending uh, these Fijian attacks. Well, they've had to defend a lot in that quarter. Um, the Fijian team definitely, I, I thought, owned that one. Um, so I guess just reward in the end. But, uh, you know, credit to 
what Asia, the Asian team men's have been doing there. They've kept things out and uh, just hope that they can pick things up for the final quarter and um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. As we see picture from both huddles here, that's uh, Will Lacey, who's involved with the NZ Fiji side. He and Stu Pitu uh, coaching them. We've already mentioned Sam Hewitt in the NZ Asian side. And, uh, as you remember, there's a couple of opportunities here for NZ Fiji. Yeah, that was the one that did come off the, uh, the second runner. He moves that ball, doesn't he? He got a hold of it, man. This one was that penalty corner in the dying 30 seconds, which set up this goal in the net. Rocco Ludov extends for NZ Fiji. They're up 2-1 now over NZ Asian. It's a close, tough match here going into the final 17 minutes. Uh, Scott, what are we in for in this last quarter? Well, the Asian team have got nothing to lose. They're, they're, they know they've been uh, put under the pump. Um, they uh, probably... Uh, have done well to keep the uh, Fiji up for that first last quarter, and they've got nothing to lose. I want, I'd, I'd love to see them, you know, use that pace which we haven't seen in that last quarter. They didn't really have too much enough ball. We didn't see them uh, get the ball to their forwards much either. Yeah, love to see them just have a, a bit of a crack here, uh, throw things, um, not recklessly, but yeah, really start to put an emphasis on getting good ball to their players up the front and uh, allowing them to use some of the skills that they have. Here we go. What can he do? No. It's one thing I have been pretty impressed by is this uh, NZ Fiji side's their ability to, to cover up mistakes. Mm. So when they do turn the ball over or they do make an error, usually the Asian side has a fight before they can go forward. They can't just go straight at their strikers. See, even there, they probably allowed a ball that shouldn't have gone through, but they cleaned it up well, NZ Fiji, and here's... Ludolf linking up with nice Jan Peterson. Oh, oh. Oh. Mm. Way to give him two goes at it. Oh, off his body. Here is Su Chun. Oh, here we go. Pace. Yep, big opportunity. One on one. The stroke, yes. Yeah, that was That's pretty a... rough tackle there from Adrian Smith. Not a lot to argue there. They'll say that the goalkeeper was still in the picture, but that's pretty intentional mm. and pretty ugly in all things considered. Um, I love the little uh, fakes over the ball on his way in, though, from the uh, NZ Asian uh, right, attacker. Shoe, yeah. he's, uh, he was shoe up there. He's got some very good skills, and yeah, he he's, uh, can be a very deceptive player, but um, I thought he did well. He cut across uh, Adrian uh, deliberately to try and take him out of play and then um, got the result. Yeah, and here's Dill Muggleston looking for his second. Same there spot. There it is, same spot, same result. We've got two teams, two players, two goals. <laughs> Rocco Ludov for NZ Fiji and of course now Dylan Muggleston with his double for the NZ Asians. As we see, the uh, goalkeeper come out and ask about that. There was no asking. <laughs> There, that was uh, all penalty stroke. And like you said, when you've got the speed up the front for this NZ Asian team, it just takes one little opportunity. And speaking of opportunity, we go. we go back to the other end. Fiji, Kailia. Oh. oh. And Jan was uh, oh. begging for that ball to be left alone for him. Yep. Jan had come running in from a grand three steps away and wanted all of it. I think. This is sort of where the, the opportunities are for the Asian team is uh, to get one of these long balls through to, to their forwards. But um, they've got to probably do a little bit better than that, a bit, uh, better placement. Yeah, here they go. The Asians, a couple of passes, half mistake. Here's McLaughlin. It's going to come away with it. Yeah, it's an interesting one. The only issue I can see with them trying to look too long too often is they've got to have players up there to throw it to and that means not having them come back on defense 
uh, or not all of them having to come back on defence. You do leave yourself a little bit vulnerable if you're going to keep two players up as outlet targets. I think they've been doing that anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, so for this, quick transitions. And uh, I think it's Robbie who's come back on. Yep. He, he thinks about the game quite well. And uh, he'll be looking for those, the good opportunities. And speaking of, that's a great pass straight at the edge of the circle. And that one a lot better defended by Adrian Smith. Here is Dylan Muggleston. Ooh, still there for the Asian side. Skill. Oh, that's just high quality on both sides. The patience with the attackers, but man, the defenders not giving away a PC there is yeah, incredibly great, impressive. Great tight skills that those boys showed there. <coughs> Two all here. 13 left to play. The clock's ticking on both teams at the moment. You can see him searching for that Yeah. Player. Suchu looking for Ludolf. What's better than two goals for Rocco's three? That That's might two for Muggleston too, isn't it? Yep, so there it is. Go. A race for uh, the hat-trick, <laughs> or perhaps the fine for hat-trick avoidance. <laughs> I think that's um, one thing the Asian team have, have, have lacked a little bit is sometimes they fall off on their marking uh, through the back here in the, in the midfield. And, you know, Rocco was clear if that ball had come through. Yeah, that's it. It's just being uh, disciplined to stay engaged, mm. uh, even two phases away from the ball, because, like we know, it can happen so quickly. Nice trap. Off he is, oh, off he go. goes to the races. This is 2022 all over. Yep, we've seen this before. Oh, <laughs> oh Lee, it was one away. Yeah, so all he needed to finish with the top net. Yep. That'll be uh, yeah, 2022 all over again. Yeah, you could wrap it up. <laughs> Send everyone home. <laughs> Such a good player, Dylan. Uh, they've got numbers out here, but they're not using them. So let's see if they can transition here. Need that sub to come running on. <laughs> he tried. Oh. He just wasn't up off the bottles yet. <laughs> Must be a little bit frustrating to be the coach on the sideline there. <laughs> you, you had the ball, had position, had yeah. space. and uh, Get on. Throw someone on to yeah. trap it. Anyone. <laughs> Sammy Hewitt, you get on. <laughs> I'd be the first to say that he wouldn't have trapped it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sammy's been playing some good hockey this year. He's uh, scored uh, in both games I've seen him play this year. Three yeah. goals in uh, two games. There he is. It's a great overhead. Here's Ludolf cutting across. Great run. Edge of the circle. <gasps> oh! The drag leg save. The old classic. Drag the back leg and hope like heck. Holy... I actually thought he was going to open up and crank one from the top there. It was that open. Yeah. He seemed to be left alone and runs his back off. Yeah, it was a strange one. It's almost like they knew he wasn't going to shoot it. It was bizarre. But well cleaned up in the end there. I was just saying that the, the Asian team had just started to, to, to turn a corner in terms of some of the position and, and uh, on the ball they had. So, and so, so quickly that can change. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny one, isn't it? I've often um, spoken to coaches about, oh, we had X amount of possession and territory and all the rest of it. It doesn't mean much no. in hockey as much as, you know, you see the stats come up in rugby and yeah. everyone talks about completion rates and possession and, and all this sort of stuff. It doesn't mean much. It's what you do with it. Well, you know, um, how many times you watch the game of hockey where they've had all the possession, all the territory and scored no goals yep. and uh, the other team gets one chance and yep. they, they bury it and they win the game. Yeah, well, that was the first half of uh, New Zealand Indian versus uh, New Zealand Junior Māori this Absolutely. morning. And obviously, the Indians turned it around in the end, but mm. that first half <laughs> exactly was that to a T. So, right, so we're uh, just over halfway through this final quarter. Here is Ludolf. Oh, is it a PC? It's on yes. the foot. Yeah, it is. 
He's been one of the best. Absolutely. He says the ball on the, uh, on the string there. Just um, making the game looking very simple, but doing very uh, technical things. Yeah, here he is with the uh, socks low. Convertible model. There it is, straight on the toes. Yeah, not only has he scored goals, but uh, of course setting up opportunities and being a real target for this uh, NZFG team. And here is Jake Suchun down on the back line. He's looking up. Looks like they've got Ludov at the first bracket. Goes to Ludov. Nice save. Yeah, nice and low. Got his legs blocked out. Good, solid save there. John Casey. And it goes. Oh. In the middle of the circle there was Moritz Raymond. Very nearly the reverse stick deflection. Big bomb. That's fair cool. Yeah, just one of those ones where they were probably both there for the majority of the time. So Goes to the defender. And that one's overthrown there past Zach Buenamasi. The Asian team's holding on. and uh, I mean, we're two all, uh, and they're doing enough. And... Yeah, like you said, this NZ Fiji team would have come in as favourites. Um, TAB's not open today, but I did go down and check. And they were uh, the odds on coming into today. So this Asian team will take a lot out of this mm. first performance, regardless of how this last seven minutes go. I mean, even more so if they can be the ones to, to tip it on its head, but yeah. there's still a lot of hockey They've to be played. Still got to work hard. They turned the ball over and, and sort of beat them once and they stopped moving so that won't be useful for the going forward if they keep doing that yeah Ludolf he'll run this one down eyes up again Jacob wide open yeah in the middle of the field Suchun Bunamasi it's going to outrun him And just gets so it with the back left, of his stick. That, uh, it was quite dangerous leaving that ball there. Yeah, especially when uh, I dare say doesn't back his speed in there. Oh, this loose back here. Foot race. This is unnecessary turnovers. That's um, unfortunate. And now he should be getting back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah game on the line minutes to go you're a defender and you turn the ball over you've got to get back here is uh dry tan here on the ball looking straight down main street oh oh it's going to be a long corner here i think like zayna yuk in his uh half attempt to get down and try and do something with that actually touched it and here's muggleston Ryan Shoe Magic, maybe. He's so quick. Mm. Oh, he's pretty well defended. Yeah, it turns on it really fast. It's hard to defend. Yeah, Interesting. So the overhead out. Interesting. I don't know which team would prefer to go to the penalty shootout. If either yeah. of them, I mean. Um, with no disrespect, they'd probably say John Casey be the best of the four goalkeepers out here, and he's with the Asian side. Um, and then you've also got some of the speedsters, potentially, of the Asian attackers. Um, yeah. But there's some skill and, and composure in some of these uh, Fiji boys in terms of their execution as well. So it could be a real exciting one if it does get there. Under four minutes left to see who takes this first. Oh, what a pass. Quentin Smith. <laughs> oh, that's what? ice. Ice in the veins. It was all or nothing, too, because if he'd missed it, 
Yeah, it's like there's a lot of pressure to come from the, the Fiji team for a few the last few minutes here. Yep. And everyone's back. Straight through it goes. Nothing there on the post for into Fiji. Four minutes. Yeah, for those watching at home, oh, our actual game pass. clock is three minutes fifty two now, so oh, just under four minutes left to play. So we've got a minute fast on the clock on your screens. Yeah. So the ball went over the defender there and I thought uh They'd be called for that, but yeah. right call in the end. Yeah, so it's uh, yeah, three and a half minutes left to play. You can see the Asian team uh, struggling on, the, on their legs a little bit here, uh, the ones that are running back and forth from uh, up high. But I uh, only have to hold on for a few more minutes. That's it. And then it's anyone's game. Love to see a buzzer beater. Love to see something right at the death, especially a field goal. This it could be one of those games you talked about where everything's uh, in the favour of one team and just one break. Oh, this is a, <laughs> a little overhead taken in by Smitty there. Jacob Suchun's wide open again. He's, uh, they, if they leave him alone, he'll, he'll set things up nicely for the rest of his team if they uh, keep leaving him in space. Smitty goes over. Ludolf can't pull it down. Scanlon can't keep it in. I get the feeling the Asian team are sort of playing for the time here. They're slowing things down. Yeah, perhaps they're the team more uh, comfortable going to the shootout. Oh. And here's Ludolf. Releases it. They've got it back there. Oh, oh, PC. oh, big PC. I think the first one was they got entangled up and there's a bit of an obstruction. Then I think he just hit the ball away. This is what's caused the penalty corner. That's discipline in the late moments. We'll see it on the replay. Well, we just missed it, actually. I wouldn't want to be uh, near Sam right now. <laughs> All right, here it could be. This could be the moment that wins or loses the game here. Can the keeper pull off one more amazing save? He's been such a great job in the last few PCs. Loot off. It's up. And they'll go again here, high up off the goalkeeper. Interesting, they've, uh, that's three in a row now that he's gone low, mm. Ludolf, and the one he scored actually went high. Um, I know and tall goalkeepers usually are, are better with the hands, but if the sun's beaming sun, down that way. Exactly, sun's in his eyes, it might be a change now. Ludolf, oh. low, low again. He's really good down right. low. Moves his feet well, gets his legs in the way. I'd be asking for a, a high one. Seconds to go. Great pass. Here it is. Oh, foot again. Here it is. This is it now. The last play of the this game. This will be the last bit for both teams. We asked for a buzzer beater. This could well be it. We see this replay. It's Julius Tullivout. Second effort. Put it onto the foot there. What do you got, Scott? Is it? Uh, are we wrapped up in 10 seconds or are we going to some extras? I'd love to see extra uh, the, the, the shootout, the shoot but I, I get the sinking feeling it won't happen. It's one of those situations. Looks like Ludolf. Second bracket. Oh, it's messy. Straight hit. It's wide. That's not how they drew it up. You can see the shakes of the head. And ladies and gentlemen... Shootout. We're going to a penalty shootout for those unfamiliar. A draw tied needs a winner. Now it's a short format tournament. We need winners out of every game. So uh, we're going to a penalty shootout. What that means, each team will now go and select five 
uh, shootout takers or attackers and one goalkeeper or defender. And uh, teams will alternate and being given eight seconds to take the ball from the 25-yard line, the solid line at the, uh, the quarter mark, towards the goal and attempt to score. Uh, they can have as many um, shootout attempts, you know, shots at goal as they like inside those eight seconds. So just because the goalkeeper saves the first one doesn't mean it's over. They shoot again. They can take all of the eight seconds. Now, if the goalkeeper commits an offence, there's an option of either a retake or a penalty stroke, depending on the severity of that offence. If the attacker commits an offence, i.e. a shepherd or a back of the stick or a foot, that shootout is over, no goal. Obviously, if it goes out or over the back line, um, that's out, no goal. The eight seconds doesn't keep ticking. And a goal, of course, is a goal. Now, if a stroke is awarded, it doesn't actually have to be that shootout taker that takes the stroke. Any of the players can come in and take the penalty stroke. Uh, if we get through those five attempts each and we're still locked up, then we'll go through to said sudden death where it's one for one. If you make it and the next team misses, that's game over. Uh, so it's pretty exciting stuff, similar to uh, penalty kicks in football and a little bit more exciting than the old strokes that it was in, <laughs> in yeah. yesteryear. Uh, it just gives a little bit more, I think, opportunity for the goalkeepers to, to get out and, and save and, and be the heroes rather than just standing on their line and hoping it hits them. Absolutely. I mean, penalty strokes, as we've seen today twice uh, in this game, where uh, if you're good enough, you can almost bank the goal. Um, but, you know, I've seen plenty of shootouts, uh, even in the last year, where uh, the keeper can really dominate. And uh, I think you pointed out earlier, um, the, the A Asian team's keeper, is it John Casey, he has had a great game, and uh, he'll be going into this with a lot of confidence. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And... Uh, yeah, looking forward to this one. First shootout of the tournament and, of course, of the day. And so we'll see the captains come together there in the middle of the field. They'll do a, they'll do a coin toss just to decide who goes first. And, uh, you know, there's some, there's some subtleties in terms of what that means. Um, chasing versus leading. Uh, then if it does go to sudden death, the reverse of that. So there's lots of little subtleties to to taking the first penalty shootout. All right, Scott, the uh, the million dollar question for you is if you're, you're chosen your team of five, what uh, what number do you want to be? Me? Ah. Uh. I'd, like, I'd go second. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Any, any reasoning about second? Uh, I get those nerves out of the first um, first one uh, being taken by your teammate. Yep. And see, seeing also the flow of how things are going with the other, other um, opposition. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, it would be, uh, probably the, the space I'd be most comfortable. I'm not uh, necessarily the guy that would be want to go last. <laughs> yep. With the game on the line. No, fair enough, fair enough. It's probably... Uh, like I said, it's probably the safest spot to be, I think, two yeah. or three um, yeah. in the safety spots. <laughs> yeah. So it looks like uh, the Asian side, they'll take the first attack. Now, the good thing for the Indian team, a little side note, um, neither of these teams will be able to take the full four points out of this game either. So they'll clear themselves at the top of the table for the men standing, just gives them a little bit of breathing room come the late parts of the weekend uh, where points are so important. Well, I think the result also sends a message that uh, uh, if they thought they might be able to sort of ha maybe have uh, one easier game than the other, um, <laughs> yeah. it's not the case. They've no. got a uh, tough weekend ahead of them. That's it. No easy games here. And so in goal for Fiji, Ravi, Gaunda. And of Ryan Shu taking the, the first. Here he goes, looking. He's going to go for the spin. There it is. It's one of the more popular moves uh, in the game at the moment of these penalty shootouts. Get a goalkeeper onto one side of the goal, keep rip that around. Yep. I keep forgetting, he's still at school. He's still <laughs> in high school, and he's taking the first stroke, um, or first penalty uh, shot uh, of the game. 
playing for the Asian team for the very first time. Some yeah. real confidence there. It's Jacob Suchun here. Oh, oh, it got through in the end. I thought he probably could have faked the spin and the little reverse stick blade was open, but he kept at it, persistent. I think he, he actually made a, a slight error and that made the keeper go down and then try and get up again. Yeah. And that's uh, what got him the goal. Oh, no mucking yeah. around. Nah, straight pass. Saw the opening on that reverse stick. He's all smiles too. Love that. It was Ben Schwass there. Now we've got Rocco Ludoff, the goal scorer for Inti Fiji. Oh, the full spin. Oh. And in the roof. Have you ever seen anything more cool and calm than that? It's just all class. Oh. Uh, so that, of course, is the extension of the traditional spin, is spin all the way and get the goalkeeper committed. And, and uh, yeah, just make it a little bit harder for himself putting <laughs> yeah. on the reverse flick. Yeah, it's, but made it look so easy. Yeah, and here's uh, the Asians' goal scorer in Dylan Muggleston. Okay, and I love the composure these uh, all these boys are showing out there. Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting that both those two Asian uh, attackers have gone that side because Ravi Gounder in goal, I think he's probably just uh, waiting for that spin and, and holding on his left foot a little bit too much, and they see the open gap. Mm. Blade goes through, and it's all green lights at the moment in the shootout, and here comes Dan Scanlon. Oh, oh. <laughs> that thing's glued to the stick. Scan goes the reverse show. Back around on the forehand. I appreciate the skills that oh, are Oh, this here. is, this, yeah. Uh, really high level of skill on, on all teams and all players that have taken their shots so far. Yeah, we spoke about the goalkeepers being able to be heroes here. Not when the skill level's this high yeah. from the attackers. This is top quality shootouts. A little bit of a... Uh, Perhaps error in the start there. That's Chen Yang. Chance to retake. Yep, so just a retake for Chen Yang. And he goes to spin, <laughs> loves it. He's playing mind games with the keeper. Yep, yep. Just when you thought we were going to keep dragging those out to your right foot. We're spinning back again. Now here's a man to show us a little bit of uh, a little bit of pizzazz on the shootout. Adam Kylia. What's he got doing? Needs to because it's all green light so far. Here is Kylia. Oh, there might be the first save. There is the first save. Oh, time for the John Casey to step up, and he, yeah. he took his moment. Yeah, he went the Jonah Lomu sidestep on the way in, too. <laughs> Adam Kylie, and maybe looks a little ginger on the walk back, too. This now is the opportunity to take it all home. Daniel Easton here for New Zealand Asians. He's done it. Daniel Easton! What a start to the tournament for this brand new team. Yep, they've done it. They've won it in a penalty shootout. What a finish in the end there. Five made penalty shootouts. That's almost unheard of. Excellent taking there yeah. by the NZ Asian team. Absolutely. And that, I mean, it's, it's the last game. We've talked about having a shootout possibly through the game, through the day. And to come up with something of that quality to finish the, the first day of play, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. As we see the teams coming from the field here, we can hear the applause out our window. And the applause has got to go to both teams. Yeah. That was a, a really quality game for the first day of tournament. Real quality showing from both teams from the first whistle right through to the end of the shootout. And like you said, Scott, you guys uh, got to be pleased with that first up showing from the New Zealand Asian side. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know... Uh, 
the the fact that we have a Fiji team here and uh, having some Fiji players is fantastic. I think they uh, would be a little bit upset at themselves because they played, I thought, overall the better hockey. Um, but you know, the Asians just defended and defended, and um, in that last quarter, I think John Casey and the goal just stepped up and just kept stepping up, and uh, was the difference maker in the end. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If we were to look out there on the field, I mentioned Rocco Ludoff is probably one of the best from the NZ Fiji side. But man, a lot was thrown at that goal of the New Zealand Asian side yeah. in that fourth quarter. And it just kept being turned away, turned away, turned away. So, you know, hats off to the defensive group. And especially, like you mentioned, the goalkeeping of John Casey for the NZ Asian side. Uh, really solid, solid work from them. And, uh, you know, they start their tournament on a high. It's not quite the full four points. Um, but it's, uh, it's more than none, and they're on the mark. And uh, a real cool start for Sammy Hewitt in their team. So we'll catch up now with uh, Harley Cooper. He's down a field side with uh, their captain, Gerard Tan. We'll hear from him now. Yeah, hey, guys. We're welcome back. Uh, it's Harley here, and we're with the winning uh, uh, Captain uh, the, of the Asian Fire team, Gerard Tan. Gerard, that was a pretty hard out game. Oh, yeah. Clearly, your goalkeeper kept you in for a quite a bit of time there. Um, what was the game plan going in for you guys against this Fiji and New Zealand Fiji inside? Um, well, Sammy Hewitt like, stepped up at a pretty last minute to uh, get us on board, and he told us to play pretty quick, fast attacking hockey, and we tried to do our best. Um, I think at the end, we sort of just had to grind the game out. and. He was one of his non-negotiables was just be the dog in the team, you know, and he just grind it out until the end, which is what some of the boys did. So it was a pretty good result, yeah. That sounds good. There's probably a few innuendos there that I could have gone off with. Uh, but let's just get in there. You, obviously, I've known Sammy Hewitt for a while. So what sort of coaching stuff did he actually get you guys to really push? Because clearly that Fijian team is the uh, basically most of the Pacifica, and you boys have only just come in. So what is it, um, what are we looking at building on? Is this going to be the future of the Asian team? getting in there and getting involved or what? Uh, I think it's like it's one of the things Sammy said was I think it's quite a bit of an honour to be part of the first team um, and especially looking for things to go forward into the future with so I think yeah I think this is just a start for us so hopefully we can build on that in the future and go from there yeah. And tomorrow uh, you're taking on the the Indians, I the Indians tomorrow yeah, yeah, okay yeah. that's cool are you going to hope that John carries your team to the end on that one too? Oh, I mean, John put in a good shift and, I mean, what a talent. But, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, sleep on it tonight, see what the boys can do tomorrow. And we'll get off against the Indians, yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you for that. And, um, yeah, congratulations and good luck for tomorrow. Sweet. Cheers, Harley. Cheers, man. Thank you. That is some wise and often inappropriate words there from Harley Cooper down field side. So good that we've had him today catching up with uh, some of the captains of the teams uh, just getting a little bit of an insight into uh, day one here of heritage hockey uh, that will wrap us up here we see the last bits of the crowd sticking around there's our teams warming down it's been an exciting game and an exciting day here at day one of heritage hockey 2024 capped off of course with the penalty shootout which saw the new zealand asian team picking up their first win uh, in their first appearance here at the tournament over NZ Fiji. Of course, we've got four more games coming up tomorrow, starting at 10 o'clock. Those games kick off with New Zealand Asian women taking on NZISA, the Indian Sports Association women. Following that, there's the same games, uh, but for the men at midday, New Zealand Asia versus New Zealand Indian Sports. 2 p.m., we've got the New Zealand Junior Māori women taking on New Zealand Heritage Barbarians. Two first up winners, so that'll be a, a good one. And then at four o'clock, the men, the New Zealand Junior Māori men, taking on New Zealand Fiji. So games coming up from 10 o'clock tomorrow. Uh, we'll be there live for all four of them. Uh, I've been Brad Pittman, joined by Scott Wolf for today's game. Take care, and we'll see you all again tomorrow.
I'm just down around me, then but look, I got it right. Don't you try to hit me, now you live a petty life. I don't snatch, I lay awake, I pray for better life.